Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find your family and also how to find your brother, who is actually the most powerful companion at the start of the game that you have access to. Let me explain. Firstly, doing this quest gives us access to two younger siblings that you can build as they grow up in preparation to fulfill a certain role in your party or clan when they're old enough. And we'll go over the options on how to build your siblings in this video too. But secondly, and most importantly, you get your brother back and he comes with a bunch of pre-leveled skills, but all of his attribute points and perk points are actually not yet assigned. This means that you can completely customize him for whatever purpose you require on that playthrough. I'll talk about how I'm going to build him later on in the video and show you the best perks I'm selecting, but if you've not been following my playthrough, let me explain how you could find him step by step. At the start of the game during the tutorial, you'll take on the bandit Radagos, where you'll track down his hideout and then go and capture him with your brother. After this, your brother will actually then leave your party with the bandit Radagos, and he'll go and track down your family's location. At this point, you'll receive this new quest to establish your clan. To do this, you'll need to get 2,000 gold, increase your current party size to 20, get 50 renown, and also hire one companion. I already made a guide on exactly how you can do that quickly in yesterday's video which is linked down below. The most time consuming part being leveling your renown which can be done quite quickly by winning battles where the enemy outnumbers you or winning tournaments. But after you've completed that quest to establish your clan, any settlement that we now go to will create a new encounter. So we're just going to head over to the closest settlement, which happens to be this one in Batania, and trigger the events of the next quest to find our family. Good to see you. Believe it or not, I mean that. I've been looking for you. And here comes Radagos. You escaped. Where's my brother? What happened? Calm down now. I'll tell you everything. Very well. We found your little brother and sister, but my former partner betrayed me. We came into his camp to negotiate the kid's release, and he seized us right then and there. I mean, sounds exactly like your... Well, I mean, your partner was a bandit, so... What scum, eh? Even in this profession, double-crossing your comrades is frowned upon. I see. I escaped. One of his men, a little guiltier than the rest, cut my bonds when the others were sleeping. But I can't let a traitor live, so I decided to find you and offer you a deal. Fair enough. I know where he is now. If you agree, we can attack together and save your kin. Ah, uh, he don't have a choice. But in return, I will have the pleasure of killing that bastard. So what do you say? Uh, how can we possibly trust each other? Ah, <sighs> you can't trust me, but you need me. And I figure you have enough men that you could easily slit my throat pretty quickly if I lead you into a trap. And I don't need to trust you. You're my vehicle of revenge, not my partner. I can live with that. Let's do this. Splendid. But I have a few things to do. There is a hideout near this city. He keeps your siblings there. I will join you right where the path leads up, just out of the sight of their scouts. See you there then, but remember, if this is a trap or something, that will cost your life. Ah, of course. I have no doubts on that score. And now you have the quest to rescue your family. Radagos said that he knows where your siblings are. He offered to attack together. He'll wait for you at the hideout that he mentioned near Dunglanus. You can see the hideout marked on your map. So if we go back to the map, you can see the hideout is located just over here. And no matter where you are in the game, depending which settlement that you found the bandit Radagos at, the hideout will just be located as close as possible to that settlement. And it will always be marked on your map, as you can see. So our next mission is to go and head over to this hideout hidden in the forest here. I'm actually going to go over here to this settlement quite close by though, just so I can go ahead and rest up before we actually invade this hideout. So let's go ahead and wait here for some time. Alright, now we are heading to the hideout after we've rested for a little bit. It's hidden here in the forest, just under... You've finally arrived! I have a few things to say before we attack! 
Okay, how long have you been waiting here? Jesus, he was pissed. We have to be clever. He is a cunning fellow in a low and base kind of way. I defeated you before. I know how your gang operates. Let's talking more raiding. Come on. That you did. That you did. Lead on then. He trusts me. You spy through the trees, what seems to be a clearing in the forest, with what appears to be the outlines of a camp. You can see armed men moving about. As you listen quietly, you hear scraps of conversation about raids, ransoms, and the best places to waylay travellers. Wait until nightfall to attack. After waiting a while, you find a good opportunity to close in undetected beneath the Shroud of Night. The Stealth Archer. So we can choose who we want to take into this battle. We have to take Radagos, obviously. I'm also going to go ahead and take the Fian Champion. Pretty much my best people will come in with me on this fight. Where is Radagas? There he is. Look at him, the bandit bastard. So I can see three guys gathered at the campfire right here. Should be able to easily take this guy out. Oh! Must have been the wind. Okay, all three of these guys have been triggered. Oh, they've actually got arrows? I didn't realise. I don't want to waste my men by getting them to charge archers. Get Rex up. Let's go. Oh, God. My man can watch me 1v1 these silly bandits. These silly freebooters. But they are deadly with their arrows, so you do need to be careful. Stealth Archer isn't working so far. I'm going to get my men to move up on this hill here, just so they can back me up should I need their help. We've got to have a lot of freebooters here, so I just need to make sure I'm near cover when necessary. To be able to take this guy out and just be on the campfire here pretty easily. Even though I'm here. Oh! Didn't even know that hit him. Right in the knee. My man's going to become a guard of white run now. Yeah, Rex, son. Another one down. My men are also shooting this guy. Let's get them to charge on him. Oh, what? The arrow went right above his head. Okay, he's dead. Great. You can see another campsite in the distance over there, and there's a few men patrolling be able to take out this guy from a distance quite easily just behind this tree. Oh, get wrecked. One stealth assassination down with only 11 arrows left. This guy is patrolling, but I'm pretty sure I can shoot this other guy in the campsite without him noticing. So let's have a go. Oh yeah, we triggered a few people though. Gonna get my men to charge in now. Uh oh, I'm getting flanked. He doesn't know I'm here. I'm stealthing them. Yeah, Rex, son. Finish off this guy. Boom. Come on, man. How many arrows is this guy gonna take? Okay, he's finally dead. I'll take his arrow. So I have two more. Hopefully my men will clear them out without taking any wounds. Boom. Headshot. Apparently that only knocked him out. Ah, this is the man. The man who stole my family. Bastards. You're the kid of my captives, right? I saw Radigo with you. You know he can't be trusted. He let us here. Where are my brothers and sisters? Nah, there's no more talking. Kill me or I'll kill you. That's how this ends. I'll do you the honour of dueling you, and my men will stand down if you win. What do you mean? There's three of you and like 20 of me. I don't duel slavers. Attack! He's mine. Finish him. Yes, well done, Battle Brothers. We didn't lose a single man. Look at that. Absolute destruction. We got seven prisoners out of that, and we also got a new splintered ranger bow. Look, we can still talk. I'll give you a pouch of silver. He said talking was a waste of time. You're Radagoss's property now. Oh! Proceed. 
<laughs> of course we're gonna execute him. Let's go! I knew you'd come. Great Evan. Damn, brother. Nothing can stop you. I love you, brother. <laughs> Savage. So glad to see you safe. Is everyone okay? Yes, we are all fine. The little ones are scared, but fine. We need to be quick and get the hell out of this place. Very well. I'll take them to the nearest fortress immediately. They will be safe there. Thank you very much, brother. Meet me there later, when you're ready to tell me everything. Okay, brother. Be careful. Take care. As you leave the hideout, Radagos comes to you and asks to talk. Well, looks like we've gotten your kin back to you. So my end of our deal is complete. I'll be making myself scarce now. I hope he comes back later just for some weird rogue ball. Don't let your conscience bother you about letting me go, by the way. I won't get back into slaving. Burn too many bridges with my old colleagues, you might say. I'll find some other way to earn my keep. Mercenary work, perhaps. Anyway, maybe our paths will cross again. Your men killed my parents. Do you really think you would not be punished? Or maybe goodbye? Can I click on him? I want that. Okay, it says he's Empire Culture. He looks like a rich trading merchant. His skills go here. He did execute the other guy. I'm, I'm tempted to let him go, but the savage side of me really wants to slaughter him. I think we'll let him go because I kind of like the idea of potentially seeing him later and recruiting him. I don't know if that's possible though. We'll see. Maybe. Goodbye, Radagos. We've rescued our family! Ragnar has lost his merciful trait? How? I literally just spared him. What? Why is the game punishing me for that? So after the bandit raid, if you go to your clan tab, you can now see that you have a new family tab and this includes your brother and two younger siblings. And you can see that currently your two younger siblings have the word holding next to them. Now what this means is that they're not actually eligible to join your party or your clan yet because they're not of the right age. So as you play the game and the years go by, they'll get older and you can actually customize and build these characters, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. So you can actually use them in your clan later and they become very useful. But then obviously you also have your brother Sven, who it says staying at Car Banseth. And this will be random depending on where the bandit hideout is, it'll just be the closest castle that he'll go and take himself and the kids to. And then you just have to go to that location and then you can recruit him. He'll be staying at the local tavern there. And as you can see, he's a complete unit and we can level him up any way we want. And we're actually going to max his intelligence, get him fully into medicine and start leveling him up as the party's healer because he's insanely powerful. Our aim is to get him the Minister of Health ability. Your troops get plus one hit points for every two skill points above 200 medical skill. So we want him to have Tell Intelligence, so he has the ability to get that, essentially. But our brother currently staying at Car Benseth, uh, which is this castle over there in the distance. But we're gonna go to the village just over here before we reach the castle. Uh, because there's actually a quest here. Oh, I just waited a bit to get some rest, and Athene has reached the age of 15 and needs your guidance. And so has Forok at the age of 12. So we can now start to do the background for our followers as well, now they've aged up. Currently, he has intelligence just to see where his stats are going to be when he grows up, kind of like we did for our character at the start of the game. He's already got an intelligence of two, so he could actually be a future steward for us if we train him in the correct way. So if we say a thirst for knowledge, he'll get intelligence free. I think we'll train him as a steward because that's going to be the most useful thing. So we're increasing his intelligence. You're usually away from your estate, but when you're able to spend time with Farrah, you encourage him to development a thirst for knowledge. You've seen many marvels in your travels and heard of many more, and one day you believe the philosophers of science will rule the world. It's true. One day the child asked you which of your skills was most useful to you. You thought for a while and answered, polearm tactics, stewards, engineering, leadership, or trade. So we can increase one of his skills here, and I'm going to say being a steward, because that's what I want him to be when he grows up. Look at him. Armies win battles, but farms and towns win wars. When spending time with the child, you notice that he shows a real ability in athletics. Not very useful, but 
Okay. He is light but strong and can outrun all of his peers. Fantastic. Now we can have a look at Athene, who is the girl. She actually has very good social skills and leadership skills. We could even make her into a good trader. At her 14th baby, at her 14th birthday, you gave Athene a special present. You've seen her treasure it and believe it will shape who she is. You gave her a well-balanced sword, a magnificent... Oh my god, she's hideous. A magnificent steed. It was just an imaginary one. A treaty on siege craft. My god, okay. That was intense. Uh, a finely crafted game sport. A well-tempered bow. A trip to your realm's court. Yep, that's what I gave up. Just a real cop-out of a present, essentially. Every well-born youth wants to see the center of it all. Where the lords and ladies gather in splendor to converse and convene, you invited the child to see the spectacle firsthand and provide the elegant clothes she'd need to be part of it. In adolescence, she began to take on a series of responsibilities and compete with adults as near equal. She managed to defeat her fencing instructor. She's equally surprised by the looks of it. Win a race! On a horse, I guess. Craft a weapon? Learn the arts of healing. Become a crack shot. Sounds a bit nutty. Trade like a veteran caravan merchant. I think that's going to be the most helpful here. Yes, the child asked to borrow money and trade with a passing caravan. You figured she'd be sharpened and learn a lesson. But in fact, the girl secured a very lucrative deal. Wow, they must have really warmed towards her. Outside events also intruded on Athene's adolescence. You believe she was particularly shaped by local rivalry. This event increased her skill in one-handed and two-handed. Hmm. A neighboring noble and brutish son took an interest in persecuting Athene, but the young woman gave him reason to look elsewhere for his prey. So you get um, plus two focus points to one-handed and two-handed, making her somewhat competent in battle. There's also a quest, Lid of Tor. We can go and speak to him. It's been a while. I heard you might need some help with a problem. Well, if you know how to fight, we could use some help. A group of deserters is camped out near here. They come every few weeks, demanding food and money. They've killed two villagers who resisted them. We asked our lord Meldil for help, but his men never get here on time. How can I help you then? Here's the plan. We lay an ambush in the village. When they show up, we split it. If you join us, I think we're a good chance of ridding ourselves of the scourge before they murder us one by one. If you don't have the time, at least leave one of your best men with 25 experienced men for four days. Uh, okay, I guess I'll wait here myself then. Thank you. Just wait in the village and we'll look out and lure them into the ambush. Let's go ahead and take hostile action because we know they're vulnerable. No, we'll wait here for some time and help them out while we actually heal ourselves as well. Oh, these are the 28 guys coming. My god, there's a lot of dudes there. Who the hell are you? If you live in the village, you better rustle up some silver and wine. Look lively, eh? This time you have to fight for it. Okay, we can now position our men for the battle. Over there, they're gonna come from. So I'm trying to look at the best ground that we can sort of attack them from. And I believe we should take up a solid position here in the center. And then we are ready to battle and defend the village. So I'm just going to sit back and chill while the enemy come to us would be more preferable. Let's go and scout out where they actually are. Okay, here they come, right in the back here. There's quite a few of these raiders. I've somehow missed every single one of them, though. We'll get them to charge in. And we can just shoot them at the back here pretty easily. How did that get blocked? My men are coming in from behind here. Should be able to take them all out pretty easily though. Yeah, wreck some. Beautiful, look at that. Get stuck in, boys. Get stuck in, let's go. They're running, they're running, get them, finish them off. One down, right in the back. Another one down, there we go. We let the villagers take all the losses. We only lost a few men. I use them all as a meat shield. And we got some prisoners, very nice. Oh, wow, we got tons of good loot. Oh, new horse, tier two horse, let's go. Very nice. 
We have killed the deserters and we have got, we've got a return for our reward. Okay, let's go and have a chat with them. Here's what we promised, 1,364 deniers. I hope this makes it worth the blood spilled. Oh, we can say half the coin for more relationship. Nope, we're, we're taking that coin, all of it. Thank you for the help, farewell. There we go, we'll extort them ourselves, thank you very much. We can also buy a lot of hardwood here. Then we can head over to the city now we've helped out the locals speed over there right now get to our brother battle brother so we can find our brother over here in the tavern district and then just visit the tavern itself so here we are in the tavern and here we can actually find sven brother about your position in the clan oh we can ask him to play a game of bachal something i'd like to discuss i want you to join my party i would be honored see you outside very well, brother, but I would also like you to take over a position in the clan. I would like to give you a new role. You will now be the surgeon. I would be honored. Yes, brother. Okay, goodbye. And now Sven has joined our party. He's got an iron round shield and a spiked highland club. Pretty damn useful indeed. We need to give him a bow as well, though. And some arrows. Now if we go to the character tab and we navigate to our brother... We can now sort out his stats. So as you can see, all of his attributes are currently level 1, meaning he is capped on all of his things like riding, for example. He can't level up any more on riding and, and same with uh, charm and leadership. We actually want to specialize him into intelligence though, so he can be an insanely good healer for the party. So we're going to go ahead and put 10 points into intelligence, like so. And we're also going to put 5 focus points into it as well. And he will level that up really quickly as the army surgeon. Now Sven is very interesting and how you build him will depend on what you want to use him for. But as you can see, I have given him 10 intelligence. It's always very useful if your companions have a high steward skill and medicine skill. So I've put all of his focus points into steward and medicine and given him 10 intelligence so that he can max out both of these skills. Secondly, I've put the rest of his attribute points into social. Then I've maxed his leadership focus points so that if he has his own army, he can have the maximum amount of people in his party. His one-handed, two-handed and polearm skills are already really good. So instead of investing any additional points in Vigor or any focus points in that, I just thought I'd leave him sort of capped at that ability. He can't level it up anymore, but he's already pretty competent in those skills. And leveling them up beyond that doesn't add enough value compared to if I was to specialize him in leadership or steward and medicine. So now we have our brother, we're going to leave the city and conveniently one of the nobles we actually need to speak to for this quest, investigating narrators as fully, is standing right outside. So we should definitely talk to him before we go any further. Let's have a chat with them. Talk to other members. Ingalfar is actually someone we need to speak to to the main quest. Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? My name is Ragnar, sir. May I ask your name? I'm Ilgatha of the Day Kortan, one of the most illustrious families in the annals of the Valadian Kingdom. If you ever want a chance for glory, you might want to consider fighting for me. Or can you tell me anything about the Battle of the Pandraic? I was there. I was just a young squire there. I have heard no sweeter music than the thunder of our hooves as we bore down on the Azurai rabble. We fell on them like a falcon plunges on a rabbit. They had overextended themselves, chasing the imperial archers, light foot before our knights. There was no contest. Let me tell you something. Nine tenths of our victory is recognized when your enemy has made a mistake. The rash perish as swiftly as the wheat, and they deserve it just as much. We should have gone to seize all of the Western Empire. If Durther had had any manhood, we'd have done so. But his heart was never in the war. He believed he'd broken his oath to the Empire by helping the Sturgeons, and ignored at him. He'd have made a fine lackey. Instead, he's our king. So, there's a bit of strife there in the Valadian Kingdom, which is very interesting to hear. Now, at this point, since we are Clan Tier Level 1, we can actually now become a mercenary for one of the different factions in the game. 
and that's going to be a great way of farming influence and earning money. So next episode, I'm going to be showing you guys the best way of building up your own army, becoming a mercenary of what faction, whichever one we're going to choose, and also earning passive income by creating a caravan as well. That episode is going to be linked down below in the description for you guys to watch. But we're also going to be doing a live stream on the weekend as well. And in that live stream, we're going to be finding all of the nobles while also battling various enemies across the map and raiding a few villages. So if you guys want to watch that, I'll link that down below. And you can subscribe with the bell icon so you get notified about when that video actually comes out. But thanks so much for the support on these. I also noticed a lot of you have become members of the channel, which really supports me financially. So I just want you to know that I appreciate that because these videos aren't really getting many views and... It is going to be a bit of a struggle if the series doesn't get that much exposure. So all the likes and comments and everything just massively help promote these videos. And I have you guys to thank for that. So thank you so much. I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.